So thank you for uh, giving me the, the chance to talk to you today. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to start off this event. I'm Ahmed Rian, sales engineer uh, in charge of East Coast Canada, US. Um, so I'll present to you today uh, in the coming minutes how to measure special intensity distribution with our BMH 4M camera. So thank you for being here. So uh, what we will see, uh, first we'll explain what is a beam profile uh, very quickly. Uh, you may already know. So why measure beam profile? Some application examples, how to measure uh, beam profile um, with the software parameters that we will see with the live demo. And we'll conclude with the Q&A session here. So Gentech EO, uh, we have been providing laser beam measurements since 1972. Um, our core, core values are partnership, accuracy, rigor. We work with our customer to achieve the most accurate measurement solutions, standard or custom to get their business focus on what is available. So we started innovating by uh, providing power and energy measurement tools. And we continued development with a series of cameras. So that will uh, cover most of the industry requirements and needs. So speaking of requirements, we have different cameras model. As you can see here, we have uh, different cameras with uh, different effective sensor sizes and uh, that cover uh, you know, a range of wavelengths from 110 to uh, 19, uh, 1595. So uh, with, for example, the BMH4M, uh, the camera that we will uh, do a live demo a little bit later, uh, we have different accessories uh, that will go that allows customers to go from the UV uh, wavelength up to the IR. Uh, as you can see here, the accessories UV converter with the IR adapter as well. So beam profile, as you already know, it's a, a measurement of the special distribution of laser beams intensity, particular to the to the propagation path. It's used to measure beam profile dimension, so diameter of the beam, x and y. Uh, divergence and uh, other other uh, other things to you can measure with with the camera that we'll see a little bit later. So we measure the beam profile to characterize and to diagnose problems. So uh, hotspot uh, measurement, uh, fringing, uh, checking for fringing, monitor pointing stability, etc. So some application example. Uh, first one, the laser cutting. Uh, so. Other than the power and energy uh, measurement, of course, which, uh, which are important to know when you do the laser cutting, for example, the focal spot and shape, uh, shape uh, measurement, it's important to know as well uh, to ensure that you have uh, a quality of the cutting. Uh, you can accomplish this by taking a pick off of your, of your, laser, of your laser beam and uh, putting a camera in front of this pickup beam, you are able to know the profile and the exact uh, dimensions of your beam. Another application is the free space uh, system alignment. Uh, so where you need to aim precisely your beam, uh, your laser beam. So the beam tracking features that we'll see a little bit later will help you doing so, as will give you the position of the beam in real time. Uh, of course, the beam profiler will also be very useful uh, when you are working with the uh, wavelength that you cannot see, of course. So this uh, is very helpful to adjust and align your beam. Other application would be the optical source characterization, uh, where uh, you need to know the numerical aperture, the provision mode, multi-mode, mono-mode, pointing stability, etc. You can do that by measuring the divergence, the profile type, the centered position, etc. So now, how to measure beam profile? So very simple, you have to, you need to an area sensor that will capture the intensity distribution and you need a software. So the software will analyze the data and give you the info you need on your screen, right? So I like to put it that way, you have inputs and outputs. Inputs that you will adjust, change in the software. The outputs is the information that you will gather from the software. Uh, so some uh, examples of those parameters that we will see uh, later in the hands-on. Um, the beam diameter, for example, uh, since you are working with Gaussian beams, there are different uh, beam diameter definitions. Uh, there is, for example, there is, for example, the full width at half maximum, the one divided by E square definition, and the definition based on all pixels, the four sigma, 
uh, which is based on ISO standards. It's the most uh, say used uh, definition um, by our customers. Also, uh, another parameter that you can change in, in uh, the software is the exposure time. You can set it to auto or manual. Uh, note that in automatic, if you, you have um, uh, 200 milliseconds, so your laser beam is too low and you would need to remove attenuation um, before the camera or change the ND filter that comes with the camera. On the opposite side, if the exposure time is 0 0.06 milliseconds, you should add attenuation to your laser beam. Another uh, parameters is the image averaging. You can set it to 0, 2, 5, 10. Um, this is very useful when you have an unstable uh, image and you would like to smooth the beam fluctuation over time. Active area is another parameter uh, where uh, when working with small beams, you can optimize the speed of the data transfer and still maintain accurate uh, results uh, by using an active area uh, that is twice the size of the beam. So finally, background sub subtraction, which is not really a software parameter uh, that you're able to change, but more a process that you should do to make sure to have the best profile quality possible. We'll go through it in the live demo. Speaking of the live demo, so let's start the demo. So I will click on, on the software uh, shortcuts. So it's uh, recognizing, so it's detecting the, the, the camera that is already plugged in the computer. So I select the camera. So, and I start capturing. It will adjust automatically the exposure time to have the best shape possible. So you have the 3D display, you have the 2D display, you have the crosshair display, and also the beam tracking display. So back to the 2D display here. We see the background noise. Uh, you know, here the black the black color is not really black. It's like a dark blue. This is because of the noise around the detector, around the camera. So you need to do the background subtraction as we discussed earlier. So background subtraction. You click on the subtract background. It tells you to block your beam. So I'm blocking my beam here. I click on OK. Tell me to wait. And once it's done, I can remove. And you see here the black, it's a, almost a perfect black around the beam. I'll just adjust the window here. Okay, so let's uh, see the inputs that we talked about earlier. The beam definition here, as you can see the different options. So it is on four sigma by, uh, by default. Um, you have the exposure time, automatic or manual, you can set it to automatic. You have the image averaging, the active area, and different other options that you can change depending on each situation to optimize your beam profile. You can also uh, do uh, automatic acquisition mode with a different uh, format text or image uh, texting, and you can enter the total duration of the acquisition. So uh, the outputs now, of course, you have the diameter in X, and Y, the ellipticity, the orientation of the beam, the centroid in X and Y, the peak in X and Y, and, uh, and you can have uh, also um, the divergence of the beam as output. So if you use, for example, a lens with a known uh, focal length, you will put the camera at this focal length. Here, for example, it's 200 millimeters. 
and uh, knowing the the the, uh, the focal length, you will have uh, estimation of the divergence in x and y. Of course, there are other tools that will give you divergence more precisely, as our BMH M square. But this is uh, really a good approximation of the divergence of the beam. Now, we talked about the beam tracking. Yes, so in the display beam tracking, you can uh, you can track your beam. You can have you can visualize that by zooming in, and you can have an idea on the stability of the beam. In some application, this is important to take into account. So how the beam is moving around and mean position. So that was a quick hands-on. Of course, we only have 12 minutes, so uh, we cannot go through all the the, the software parameters, but I will be more than happy to uh, respond any question, um, any information, I'll be available uh, to, do the, to do so. So uh, conclusion, take home messages. Uh, as we saw a powerful tool to characterize diagnostic systems, our cameras, uh, the software is easy to use and very intuitive. Um, and uh, also, um, last thing I would like to touch base with you is the possibility to do line power, inline power measurement. So where you can have a beam sampler uh, taking a, a pickup of the beam, a small portion of the beam to the camera, and uh, the rest uh, go to, uh, to, uh, to the power, uh, power meter tool here that you can see in the image. So the camera is at the top, the power meter at the left side. It will allow you to, it will allow you to, to do the beam profiling as well, as well as the power measurement on the same time. Uh, we have uh, the beam sampler that, that can take up to 500 watts and very soon up to one kilowatts. Thank you for your time. And uh, I hope I uh, explain a little bit, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the beam profiling, um, you know, uh, cameras that we have, uh, what are the possibilities. Again, if any questions, uh, I'll be more than happy to to respond to those questions. So thank you. <laughs>